going back to SVRAM alone. Last few times we've been sailing, uh, we noticed that uh, the boom tends to raise up when you're sailing downwind. Uh, we knew we needed a boom vang and finally got around to making one. I had had the, all this spliced up and the strop for this ring here, the top ring, was wrapped around double around the boom. And we noticed as we were using the vang that every time you put tension on it, it tended to creep forward. So it was sliding forward every time and eventually ended up almost up to these cleats here. I shortened the strop and went back to this boom bale here. I'm not sure if it's the ideal angle. I don't know, it's something like a 30 degree angle, I think is what they recommend, somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees. This is a little bit more, a little bit steeper than 30, 30 degrees based on the height of the boom to the gooseneck and the length out from the mast. I've got a couple of little arrangements here with low friction rings that go to a soft shackle. And these are just lead rings that lead the, lead the line fair back to the cockpit. When I had the headliner down to install the main sheet tailing winch, the new winch we uh, just installed, I also made a little G10 block for this cam cleat. So when you pull on the vang, right now the vang is slack, you pull on it, set it down, lock it in place, and it really puts a lot of pressure on the boom. With the number of falls I got there, the block, uh, cascading vang runs six to one, I think, six to one purchase. So pretty good mechanical advantage. And in order to operate correctly inside the, uh, the cam cleat, I had to splice some double braid to the Spectra. And that's the Spectra to double braid splice you see up there. So after a couple of times out on the water, uh, working the boom bang, I've come up with my third iteration of an attachment point. After a little trial and error, uh, I'm finally going to cut another hole in our boom. And I should have done this when we had the boom off. And it's a lot trickier when it's on the boat. So what I did was make a pattern for the boom bale. And then that thing's going to go get fed up inside and then riveted into the boom just like this one. Now I just need to drill some holes and cut some holes in the boom. I already pulled back the reef lines and installed some chaser lines in their place. That way metal shavings don't get uh, snagged up in your uh, reefing lines. Using the Dremel, I went through a couple of different bits. I tried this thing, it clogged up. I tried this thing, it clogged up. It's just a joke. I used this. This is pretty much what I always use on aluminum, except you gotta take the pliers and spin it backwards and clean out the aluminum grit. I use this thing, which is a uh, Dremel 454. This thing is like a big block Chevy engine. It chews up metal like crazy. I just need to drill a couple more holes and install it. So, just for proper insulation, I'm going to go ahead and make sure the other one aligns correctly. So, I'm going to go ahead and coat this rivet. So here it is installed, our new boom bale for our new boom bang. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website at SV Ramble On.